What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the neighborhood. My name is Andrew Kimball, and today I'm going to be ranking all of the games in one of my favorite franchises, Assassin's Creed. I was a Nintendo kid growing up, and I only had handhelds until I got my GameCube for Christmas one year when I was about 10 or 11 years old. When I was a teenager, the first console outside of Nintendo that I bought was an Xbox 360, and one of the first games I got with it was Assassin's Creed 2. I've been a fan of the series ever since. I'm the type of fan who enjoys the modern day storyline and the greater lore of the series. Over the years, the series has seen some highs and some lows, but I've always found myself playing each new game at release and for the most part enjoying them. There are some moments and characters that will stick with me forever. I wanted to give a brief picture of my history and opinion of the Assassin's Creed franchise so that you understand where I'm coming from with my list. I'm a fan, so even the games that rank at the bottom of the list are still games I enjoy. With that being said, let's get into it. First, I want to start off with some honorable mentions. Some games that people might argue could or should be on the list, but I personally can't justify including them for one reason or another. Let's get this out of the way right now. I started my journey with the series with Assassin's Creed 2, and just haven't gotten around to playing the first game. At this point, the only way I'll probably play it is if they remake it or remaster it. Let me know in the comments though if you think it's worth going back to in 2023. Freedom Cry is technically an expansion for Black Flag, but I think it stands alone more so than the modern DLC that we get for the newer games. It is also sold as a standalone game that doesn't require the base game in order to play it. I really enjoyed Freedom Cry, especially since it's an extension of Assassin's Creed 4 Black Flag, but I didn't want to overcomplicate things by including DLC in the ranking. If you want me to try and rank the Assassin's Creed DLC, let me know in the comments and I'll give it my best shot in another video. I played the version of Liberation that was ported to consoles from the Vita, but I never finished it. I really liked the setting, being in Louisiana swamps was an interesting environment, and I enjoyed playing as Aveline, especially since we hadn't seen any female protagonists up to that point. But the gameplay and polish were definitely a step down from the main series, and at some point I fell off the game and never made it back to it. And lastly, I will not be including the Assassin's Creed Chronicles games because, I mean, come on. So with all that out of the way, let's get into the main list. Keep in mind, this is my ranking and if you agree or disagree with where a game ends up in my list, let me know in the comments. I'm a fan of the newer RPG style games that we've gotten over the last few years, but Valhalla was too much. There was a lot that I liked about the game, its take on Norse mythology was fun to see, and building up Ivor's home base was a cool measurement of your progress in the game. The structure of the game was also interesting, with each section of the map telling its own story that Ivor winds up getting involved in. I also really enjoyed the way in which Valhalla connected to the modern day story and the overall lore of the series, but you had to play around 80 hours of pretty repetitive content to see any of that. Living out the Viking fantasy was fun, but as far as Assassin's Creed games go, this one ranks in last place. Rogue is basically a reskin of Black Flag when it comes to gameplay. The story had a unique twist though, with the fact that you play as a Templar this time around and it's your job to hunt down and kill the assassins. I don't remember much of the larger plot, but I do remember key moments with characters from Black Flag where you find yourself on the opposing team. This was a unique take for the series and I appreciate it for that. But like I said earlier, the gameplay was a reskin of Black Flag, which isn't necessarily a bad thing, but it wasn't as special the second time around. Also. This game was released for the Xbox 360 generation on the same day that Assassin's Creed Unity released for the next-gen consoles at the time. Because of this, it often gets overlooked in conversations about the series, but I think it's worth playing and deserve to make it on the list. I have replayed most of the older games in the series at least once, except for this one. I remember really loving it at the time, and a lot of that has to do with the fact that this was the culmination of Ezio's story. 
Playing as an older and wiser assassin as opposed to playing an origin story was nice, and getting to see how it all concluded provided closure for one of the most iconic protagonists in video games. It also tied back to the first game which was pretty exciting. Of the three games featuring Ezio, this one is my least memorable and least favorite, but it's still part of that trilogy of games and that counts for something. I feel like I like this game a lot more than most people do, or at least more than they did at the time it released. I enjoyed the slow start with the twist that you're playing as the protagonist Connor's father and he's actually a Templar. The part where you play as a child does drag on a bit too long, but after that I think the game holds up pretty well. It was the first time we got to see a dramatically different environment when compared to all the previous games, which was a big deal back then. I liked the Native American influence and how Connor was stuck between worlds due to who his parents are. I wasn't really a fan of how Desmond's story ended in the modern day storyline, but I did appreciate it having an ending, although it was pretty obvious that Ubisoft didn't know where to go with it next. I love the setting, combat, and gameplay loop of Assassin's Creed Syndicate, but if you ask me to tell you any part of what happens in the story, I couldn't do it. For some reason, this game has the most forgettable story of the entire series for me. I remember some really spectacular moments, like when you get teleported to World War I and get to play around in that time period for a little while. And I remember that you're fighting to gain control of the various districts of London, but I don't remember the larger plot at all. Playing as two characters was an interesting idea that Ubisoft would continue to iterate on. Being able to swap to Eevee for stealth situations, and Jacob for the larger brawls, was cool in concept, but didn't actually change the flow of gameplay all that much. This game falls where it does on the list because aesthetically and gameplay wise, I really like it. But beyond that, it's mostly a blur. Assassin's Creed Odyssey took the RPG elements from the game that came before it, Assassin's Creed Origins, and expanded them on every level. The dialogue choices were pretty weak overall, but I really enjoyed the progression and customization options. Exploring the world of Greece was a ton of fun, and the ways which this game connects to the overarching Assassin's Creed lore were really interesting and way more impactful than I was expecting, although the majority of that stuff is found in the DLC. The large-scale battles were visually impressive and chaotic, and hunting down the members of the Cult of Cosmos was a unique way to integrate the assassinations into this Assassin's Creed game. Being able to choose which character you wanted to play at the start seemed like a good idea at the time, but looking back I think they should have just made Cassandra the main protagonist, as that makes the most sense to me once you've played through the game. Let me know in the comments if you agree. This is where I started my journey with the series. When I hear the words Assassin's Creed, Ezio and his games are the first things that pop into my head. His look and personality are iconic and are at least partially responsible for taking the series to the heights it has been able to reach. I was pretty surprised to be playing as some modern day guy escaping a lab at the start of the game, but once I got into Ezio's story, I was hooked. The parkour was so much fun at the time and I loved the aesthetic of the characters in the world. Being stealthy and silently taking out targets was a refreshing idea to me because up until that point, most of the games I had played were more action focused. That's not to say this game is perfect. The combat and some of the other gameplay systems were a bit clunky even at the time, but that didn't really taint the fun I had playing my first Assassin's Creed game. This game was relentlessly mocked at the time of its release due to its bugs and glitches. I played it at launch and didn't have any major problems. Even at that time, I thought the game was amazing, but as I've sat with it and returned to it recently, I wish the series had stuck with this style of gameplay for a few more games. I really enjoy the step up in the world design and how parkour functioned. It really did feel like a generational leap forward. The way Unity approached its assassination missions felt like a natural progression for the series and is something I wish was still part of the games. Each major target was like a level out of a Hitman game. You could approach from different angles, eavesdrop on conversations, plan out how you're going to get the job done, and then make your escape once you were successful. It felt a lot more true to the idea of the Assassin's Creed concept than anything we've gotten in the games released after Unity. I also really enjoyed the story. Based around the Arno and Elise relationship and how they're both intertwined in the Templar vs. Assassin conflict. The last thing I really liked about Unity, something nobody ever seems to talk about, was the multiplayer. 
taking on assassination missions with a couple of friends was a blast. Whether you perfectly executed your plan or you botched part of it and had to adapt on the fly, it was always a good time. Yes, it had some technical issues, but I would have loved to see some more iteration on the core concept of the mode as opposed to scrapping the idea completely. And that sums up my thoughts on the game as a whole, too. It had its problems at launch, sure, but the ideas and concepts from this game deserve more iteration. This game took everything that Assassin's Creed 2 did and expanded on it, while also fixing some of the jank. Out of all three Ezio games, Assassin's Creed Brotherhood is my favorite. I like where Ezio is in his life, being a little bit older and wiser, and a leader within the Assassin Order. I had a lot of fun recruiting people, building it up, and watching it grow. There were some additions to the gameplay, but if you played Assassin's Creed 2, you felt right at home playing this game. Overall, I think Brotherhood just struck the right balance of story, setting, and gameplay of all of the Ezio Trilogy games. If you haven't tried them for whatever reason, do yourself a favor and grab the Ezio collection and give it a shot. There's a reason the fans are crying out for a return of this style of Assassin's Creed game. You get to be a pirate. Do I need to say more? Probably not, but I'm going to anyways. At a time where your options for good pirate games were slim to none, not that we have a ton of choices these days either, Assassin's Creed Black Flag sails in to save the day. This is probably the best pirate game I've ever played and it's one of the best Assassin's Creed games because of that. Many casual fans of the series would probably put this game in their number one spot and I totally understand why. The classic parkour and stealth gameplay was as good as it ever was, but all of the elements that were based around being a pirate were a blast and a breath of fresh air for the series. Assassin's Creed 3 dabbled in ship combat, but this game made it a core element, to the point that some of the future games would include it even though they arguably didn't need to. The main reason this game doesn't take the top spot for me is because the Assassin's Creed parts of the story and the game are pretty bare. I do like how the game incorporates the assassins into the world of pirates, but it does feel mostly like an afterthought. That being said, this is one of the handful of games that I have 100% completed and I had an amazing time with it. Where I thought that the Assassin's Creed story and Black Flag felt like an afterthought, this game made it the whole point. It's called Assassin's Creed Origins because it's about the origins of the Assassin's Creed. Sure, it's primarily about Bayek and his story of revenge over his son's death, but it ends up setting up the creation of the Hidden Ones that would later become the Assassins. Outside of that though, I really like Bayek as a character and I was invested in his personal story the whole time. His wife, Aya, was also an incredible character, and I wish we got to spend more time with her. A game with her as the protagonist would have been great. With that being said, I love that Ubisoft opted to keep things focused and intentional by making this Bayek story and not letting you choose a character or a version of a character this was the last Assassin's Creed protagonist and story that I really connected with because it felt more focused and intentional. On the gameplay side of things, this was the first of the current style of Assassin's Creed games, and it was incredible. The size of the world, the changes to combat and traversal, all of it was executed perfectly in my opinion. The inspiration from games like The Witcher 3 and Breath of the Wild was obvious, but it still felt like its own thing. I'm also a sucker for the Egyptian setting, so seeing it realized in this way was amazing. While this game was massive compared to the previous games, and it added more RPG elements to the gameplay, I didn't feel like it went too far in that direction in the same way that Odyssey and Valhalla did. Origins found a nice balance in all of its elements and told a very personal and heartfelt story while also tying into the Assassin's Creed lore in a meaningful way. That along with the incredible setting and open world are why it lands at number one on my list. Well there you have it. That's my ranking of the Assassin's Creed games. How would you rank them? Where do you think Assassin's Creed Mirage is gonna end up on this list or on your list? Let me know in the comments. If you enjoyed this video and wanna help out the channel, consider subscribing, leaving a like, and turning on notifications, as that helps get the video into the algorithm. If you wanna hear more video game thoughts from me, check out our podcast, which you can find a link to in the description. That's all for this video. Remember, nothing is true, everything is permitted and stay friendly gamers.